And what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of MLS History Retold on the Designated Players and MLS podcast. Today, things get just a little bit weird in MLS history land. First, we're going to cover the time the New England Revolution had to subdue a passenger on a plane who was just, just a little bit off. Then, we head on over to Columbus, where fans from the Nordeca met with some West Ham fans during a friendly match with ended, which ended as anything but I'm Andrew, that's Connor, and this is MLS History Retold. Connor, how you doing, my buddy? Is that actually how you pronounce it? Is it Nordeca? I think it's Nordeca. Is it because it's like a Nordic word? Yeah, I think so. You're very knowledgeable in Nordic words, aren't you? I mean, I know everything about everything, so. I don't know about that. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, good. You got a good up. You got a good one today. I, I've seen the video, a very, very short video, but I don't know much about the background or anything. So it's a short one, but it's a good one. Yeah, mine is too. Mine's a uh, not not a ton going on. You know, there are about seven, eight, nine different people who, uh, you know, reported on the story. But as you know, it's just the same story in every single one. So that's that's what happened with mine too. Mine was God, like so annoying. The Associated Press, and then it was like ESPN, New York Times, and like eight other sources, all with the exact same article from the Associated yep. Press. I always wonder, like. What is like? Don't they teach you like journalistic integrity? Like when you're writing things, not to just rip them off. They didn't run it through Turnitin.com. That's why. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, but I'm man. I'm excited to hear about your story. I like I said. I think I said this last episode too. But I love the stories where it's like these kind of niche things that happen, as opposed to like we're going to talk about the semifinal of the 06 playoffs. Like I feel like these are just way more unique and interesting. I wish you had said that after we did Scar for the Week, because that is a perfect transition into the first paragraph of my story. Yeah, uh, I'll say it again if you want. <sighs> no, maybe maybe Just I'll do some like, and move it. I'll there. say maybe I'll do some cut and paste stuff. <laughs> yeah. While while we talk about it, let's go Scar for the Week. <clears throat> All right. Well, mine's easy. We're talking about the crew. I don't have a West Ham scarf because I'm a Chelsea fan. So of course I'm bringing out the crew scarf. I need I, I to bet- get a new one though. This is an ugly crew scarf. I bet Matt has a, a bunch of West Ham stuff because he just desperately wants them to be in the Champions League. He's a fake fan. What can I say? I'll never forget that he came in and he was like, West Ham to the Champions League. I, I, they need to get there. I'm like, dude, that's your London rival. He's like, nope, they got to get there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Next that's... year it's going to be Fulham. Yeah. And then the year after that, it's going to be Crystal Palace. <laughs> All of a sudden, he's just a Man City supporter after that. <laughs> like... Yeah, <laughs> just working his way. Mine's a stretch. I'm not going to tell you how it's a stretch, but you'll be able to put it together after I'm done with my story. Oh, boy. I love when scarves need stories. Yeah, it's the OKC Energy scarf. Oh, okay. did you mean after the, the plane story that you're going to yes, tell? Yes, you... after my, oh, okay. After I thought you had a separate story for your scarf. No, it's the OKC Energy scarf, and I'm going to let I'm going to tell my story, and then... Um... Is it because the plane ran out of energy? Oh, we'll see. We'll see. I hope um, not. That so I'm gonna pretty scary. I'm gonna pretend that you did the whole thing. Like, oh man, I love the I love the stories that are just a little bit crazier than the games and the goals, because some games are more memorable than others. Some goals go down as one you'll never forget. But then there are times that you just look around and think this story is gonna go down as one of the craziest pieces of like lore in in the history of this league, and that's what this story follows. See, wouldn't that have been a really nice transition? I told you. Thanks for ruining it, jerk. Put it simply, the Reds were on their way to California for a game against Chivas USA in the forever beloved North American Superliga. Rest in peace. They hopped on their non-chartered jet with the rest of the American population and prepared to take off the cross-country trip to play the game. However, anybody who has flown in America knows that it is never just as easy as getting up, getting on the plane, and then getting to where you need to go. There are flight delays. The seats might be too small. Your neighbor might be weird. There's not enough space for your luggage. But the best part are the other passengers that you get to fly with. By this point, most people have seen the meme going around of that woman on the airplane pointing in the back and saying, that, that guy right there is not real. Yeah, well, the incident we cover today, this incident walked so that meme could fly. On July 17th, 2008, Taylor Twellman, Matt Reese, Jeff Lorenowitz, and everybody's favorite Red Bull, Kano Smith, 
joined their teammates as they made their way to Boston Airport to board a direct flight from Boston to L.A. They checked in, they got on board, and they waited for the rest of the passengers to be seated. The flight attendants went through their safety demonstration, everybody fastened their seatbelts, and then they were off, high into the sky with one thing on their mind. Three points in the North American Superliga. However, other passengers were not so focused on that particular task. At some point in the flight, Craig Tornberg, the GM of the Revs at the time, in an interview after the incident, that there was this man in the plane who was in his early 20s crying and talking a lot of gibberish. Now, if you're on a plane right now and you see that happen, there's that's a red flag and you're calling a lot of people to be like, hey, we need to check on this guy, right? But back then they were like, eh, we're just going to go about our business. That was until this man got up to use the restroom. From here, things get a little weird. Um, I don't know if I need to say listener discretion advised. I might. Because as he emerged from said restroom, he was completely 100% naked. Hornberg was the first person on the Rev staff to see this man, at which point he advised him to probably go back in the bathroom and put his clothes on. The man responded exactly as you would expect it. I don't hear you and I don't see you. You're not real. However, he did take Tornberg's suggestion and redressed in the airplane bathroom. Upon emerging from the bathroom again, he had one thing on his mind, the emergency exit door. He made a beeline for it in a frantic motion, and this is when passengers noticed that something might be wrong and that he needed to be restrained. Up stepped three members of the New England Revolution staff, Michael Burns, VP of Player Personnel, Craig Tornberg, as previously mentioned, and Gwen Williams, the goalkeeper coach. They, along with other passengers close by, restrained this man and forced him back into his seat, at which point the flight attendants called the cockpit and requested an emergency landing where they landed in Oklahoma City, where the passenger was removed from the plane and taken in for a mental evaluation. Within the hour, the plane got back in the sky and landed in L.A. with no other issues. While no players were involved, many including Chris Albright, were interviewed about the situation before being ushered away to prep for the match. The Reds would go on to tie this match against Chivas, conceding early in the second half to Ante Razov, only for Shalry Joseph to tie the game with 12 minutes to go. New England would make it all the way to the finals of the Superliga and beat Houston in 2008 for the title. So while the incident did not have a negative impact on the team, and some may argue it even brought them closer together to have to go through something like that as a group, At the end of the day, we are all just glad that it had a safe and happy ending to this potentially horrific story. What's up with the revs in these traveling stories? First, (laughs) it's the bunny. Then it's the plane. (laughs) I mean, have we even finished them all or are there more down the line? There's got to be more. There's always more. But (laughs) what I've noticed is that there's this trend of like teams that have a lot cooler stories than others and the revs are usually on them which means somebody in that front office was like yeah let's sit down for a drink one day and spilled everything and now it's all over the place man i would imagine other teams probably had similar stories in their locker rooms and they probably just didn't publicize it but i can only imagine what the stories were like there must be some insane ones that haven't been told yet hey i mean if you want some more fun behind the scenes stories how about Columbus crew and West Ham fighting each other. Huh? All right. So there were some really good sources on this one. So I do want to definitely give credit. Uh, First one, I specifically sourced this article because it has the funniest name to an article that I've ever seen. It is written by the Associated Press and it was published by the New York Times and it was titled Hooliganism Follows British Team to Ohio. That is fantastic. What a great title to an article. Uh, and then I also took some notes from uh, an article by Steve Sirk uh, called Sirk's Note, The Birth of the Nordeca. Uh, and then there was also video that Andrew so nicely linked into our file uh, by Sean David. Four parts video, each of them being about like 15 seconds to a minute, um, which shows some of the actual like fighting between fans and fans getting escorted out. So. Uh, Another good resource if you want to actually see any of the incidents. Um, And then as well, there was a play-by-play of the game posted on West Ham's website, which was also pretty helpful because there was not a lot of details about this game. All right, so let's jump into it, though. So 
it's just a friendly between two teams that never play each other. So how seriously can people take it? Said nobody in Columbus, apparently, because we are going to talk about the brawl between West Ham and the Columbus crew that happened during a friendly back in July 2008. So you might be asking yourself, why would West Ham come over to the U.S. back in 2008 when even less people in the country cared about the sport? A very fair question to ask. The answer is for two reasons. One is that West Ham were about a month out from the English season starting. So it makes sense that they would start playing friendlies to get in shape. The second and more crucial detail as to why they were playing friendlies in the U.S. specifically was that they were the side chosen to take on the MLS All-Stars that year a tradition that began playing against European sides in 2005 and mysteriously ended in 2022. It's weird that they didn't have a game in 2023, uh, but we don't talk about that. So while West Ham may be out of season, Columbus were in the thick of their season. Coming into this friendly, the crew were sitting second in the supporter shield. So this side was no slouch. This was a good team. The game was set to be a good one, and boy, did us MLS fans get a good one. The game kicked off as normal and had a lot of early action. In the sixth minute, West Ham's Dean Ashton fired one past crew keeper Andy Grunenbaum uh, to give the Irons the lead. Columbus did not waste much time to get into the action, as in the 20th minute, a Corey Elenio cross found the head of Jason Gary, whose header beat Rob Green to level the score. Again, the action was coming fast and frequent, and in the 26th minute, Pressure from Mark Noble would cause Brad Evans to score an own goal past Grunebaum to restore the West Ham lead. That would round out the goals from the first half, bringing a lot of excitement, but maybe some frustration from Columbus fans watching their team lose the lead and especially losing the lead through an own goal. Halftime is where the incident kicks off. According to the article by the Associated Press, the fight began after West Ham fans began to enter the northeast corner of the crew stadium which the AP quotes as the area in the stadium with the most boisterous fans. The article doesn't do a good job explaining this section, so let's do a quick history lesson. Both these boisterous fans and this section of the stadium are called called the Nordeca. According to Steve Sirk, the Nordeca was born in 2007 when multiple crew supporters groups, that being the Crew Union, Hudson Street Hooligans, and La Turbina Amarilla, were shoehorned into the north corner of the stadium, later named the Nordeca. The game in question was against Toronto FC, but nearly 2,300 fans traveled to this away game. Despite that, Steve said that when he sat in the middle of the stadium, the 1,000 crew fans in the soon-to-be-named Nordeca were much louder than the 2,300 Toronto fans, showing just how dedicated the Nordeca are. What further brought on the birth of the Nordeca was the trash talking Toronto fans did prior to the start of the season. So when the two sides met and many Toronto fans made the trip all the way to all the way to Ohio, crew fans knew they needed to show up in a big way. With the quick history lesson done, let's get back into the brawl itself. Because of the West Ham fans invaded the Nordeca, crew fans began to direct their chants towards the West Ham fans in that section, who apparently did not take to the chants very well. As a result, fights began to break out, and the AP quoted around 100 crew fans and 30 West Ham fans being involved in the fights. In part one of the video uploaded to YouTube by Sean David, you could see West Ham fans being escorted up the stairs by event staff, all while fans of both sides continue to chirp and try to grab at one another. One West Ham fan can be seen walking out with a clearly torn up shirt likely from a a brawl that occurred prior to when recording began. Part three of the video takes place just outside the seating area. And while while the video is very zoomed in, you can clearly see a West Ham fan being put in a chokehold by event staff. The final part sees the West Ham fans continue to chirp back at the crew fans as event staff is escorting them out of the stadium, all while crew fans chant relegation and USA. That's the most American chant I've ever heard. Thus, seemingly ends the brawl. The rest of the game was not nearly as eventful as the first half, but it did see one more West Ham goal in the 52nd minute by Kyle Reed after a great run by Craig Bellamy. The game would finish 3-1 to and see West Ham claim the win, but even though it was just a friendly and the crew didn't win, this will surely be a game that any crew fan in attendance will never forget. Oh, and if you're wondering about the All-Star game, 
Well, MLS got a bit of revenge as they beat West Ham 3-2 after goals from Christian Gomez, Guatemoc Blanco, and Dwayne De Rosario. I was really disappointed. You know, I was able to slide in my Red Bull reference of the day, but haven't heard anything from you yet. Hey, I mentioned Dwayne De Rosario. He played for Red Bull. That's Oh, no, you could have said uh, former Red Bull Ashley Fletcher. Ashley Fletcher? Ashley Fletcher, who played at West Ham from 2016 to 2017 and played at Red Bull for seven games. Obviously, you know that link. <laughs> but why would I Why would I make that reference? There um, was no Ashley Fletcher reference. In it doesn't Bowl. matter. It's a West Ham reference. So you have to... Wait, uh, oh, that was 20... Yeah, it was a little, little earlier than the Ashley Fletcher days. But um, yeah, so I remember watching the first part of that fight and I was like, oh, okay, it's a quick little snippet. I'll put it in there. I didn't realize there were four parts. Yeah, there's there's... There's four parts to it. Part two doesn't really show much. Right. Part three is a quick one. And for some reason, the cameraman's really zoomed in. Yeah, but, was, but they like perfectly zoom in on the shot of the vent staff. And they like are like choking this West Ham fan out. <laughs> yeah, I watched it as, as you were speaking. And I was like, oh, my God, they're going to kill the guy. <laughs> <laughs> they really they were really <laughs> yeah. giving it to that guy. But then part four was just like them leaving. And then, of course, they're chanting relegation and then they chant as if as if you could have a more American chant. They busted at the USA chant. Um, so definitely funny. need to work on our chant game. That's for sure. I could see on our list, though, we are we are almost getting to events that I actually remember. <laughs> so we are we're getting to the point where I may actually remember some history. There you go. We're, we're still you... a bit far away from it. But the one I saw was the the Balotelli back heel. Nice. But that's 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 a bit down the line, so I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Yeah. Oh, the Bill Hamid encroachment PK. That'll be awesome. Uh, I think I remember. You've probably told me about that. I've I, I watched that back like every year. It's just <laughs> it's so funny. Um. Okay. Well, then we'll we'll end it there, and we'll uh, let you guys get on with your day. We appreciate you for listening to our wonderful stories. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, we definitely did. If you did, make sure you follow us wherever you get your podcast. You know when our next episode goes live. We just released a USMNT recap, and next week is a midseason recap of MLS. So we will go through and, and do a whole bunch of best teams, best players, worst teams, worst players, midseason awards, all that good stuff. We'll, we'll do a nice, good, complete uh, episode as we then transition into uh, Copa America coverage, and from there transition into League Cup coverage. So, lots of never uh, ends. Lots of lots of good coverage coming up. So make sure you follow us on uh, either your podcast platforms or on social media, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. Those are where we're most active. Eat pushing us. We are just we just hit a hundred uh, four hundred and fifty one subs on YouTube. We're going for five hundred by the end of the year. So if you can get us there before the end of the season, that would be great. Make sure you share with your friends, uh, and we will see you all on the next episode of the Designated Players and MLS Podcast. See ya.